I'm here this morning and I'm very excited about sharing some practical ways to get involved. Just maybe a, a little quick explanation how I got this information. I work for Christian Aid Ministries and uh, a few years ago we were looking at this whole subject of how we had a burden of how can our Anabaptist people get involved in crisis pregnancy centers and this whole thing of abortion. How can we get involved? And so uh, I was appointed to do some research and so I did extensive research on this. How can we get involved? And I was getting things set, in, set up and ready and uh, presented it to our board. And uh, our board just felt like it didn't quite uh, fit in with Christian Aid Ministries uh, goals and didn't feel real comfortable with it. So I was sitting on this information and I, I, was, I was burdened and wishing somehow I could go around and talk to churches, give this talk and tell people how to do it. It's simple. Let's get involved. Then I get a call from Joel Martin and uh, we started dialoguing and talking about this and, uh, and that's why I'm here this morning. So uh, I thank the Lord for giving me this opportunity to, to get this burden off of my shoulders and pass it on and, and uh, get everybody excited. Today my goal is not to give a bunch of statistics, but I'd like to create sparks. It only takes a spark to get a fire going, right? And I'd like for you to take those sparks home to your congregations and get your fires going in this uh, topic here. Just a few average statistics about abortion that are key points to what I'll be sharing. Four to seven hours after a lady thinks she's pregnant, she has decided to have an abortion. Four to seven hours after. From the time she decides to have an abortion until the time she has one, there is a nine day window of time to reach her. Nine days. And over 90% of post-abortive women said they weren't given enough information to make an informed choice. Where are God's people? Listen to this lady relate her experience. I was a scared 16-year-old girl, searching for someone to tell me that everything was going to be okay. I wanted my baby and remember trying to devise a plan of how I would raise him. No one told me that it was a doable thing. In fact, everyone told me just the opposite, that I would be ruining my life by having this child. I remember the coldness of the office and wanting to get up and leave, but I felt like I had nowhere to run and no one to run to. I remember crying uncontrollably. The nurse said that it would be over quickly and that it wouldn't hurt. It did hurt. And the pain has lasted for over 26 years. They said it was no big deal. So I thought that I could put it out of my mind forever." Unquote. There's a tremendous amount of guilt and, and emotional pain that these ladies experience from an abortion. And of course, the media would never tell you that. Media makes it sound like it's nothing. So what can we do? You may have heard, and Finney mentioned this, crisis pregnancy centers, or the latest name for these is, is uh, pregnancy resource centers or pregnancy care centers. You hear those names interchangeably. Pregnancy resource centers are in a quiet way meeting women where they are and gently steering thousands away from the horrors of abortion. Pregnancy resource centers offer free pregnancy tests and ultrasounds to women who think abortion is their only option. The goal is to show the love of Christ and to give counsel concerning other options such as adoption and parenting. And just a little side note, we need a, an Anabaptist adoption agency. That's another whole story and a subject. Most importantly, a loving and caring attitude is the goal, to walk alongside these women looking for, who are looking for a way out of their pregnancy, pointing them to Jesus. And all services offered are free at these pregnancy centers. Now there are two types of PRC, we're gonna call it, PRC facilities. We have the brick and mortar building, which is typically what we think about as a pregnancy resource center. And then we have the mobile RV unit, and this is what really gets me excited. And so we're going to look at these two real quickly here. Uh, we visited a brick and mortar facility in Alabama called Save a Life Pregnancy Test Center. And uh, 
just a very nice program. Very, they have walk-ins. Walk-ins are welcome. You can also make appointments. Um, they make sure that, that you're not sitting in the waiting room longer than five minutes. They try to keep people moving through. Very comfortable atmosphere. Before a counselor enters a room to counsel a client, the staff gather around and have a word of prayer with that uh, counselor. And then she goes into the room. Very organized and very attractive program. A stationary building allows you to have programs like Earn While You Learn. And this is another exciting part of it. The Earn While You Learn program offers various classes for parents on topics such as postpartum care, first aid, foundations of discipline, child training, and much more. And uh, every time a parent attends a class, and also if they're punctual, if they're on time, they earn tokens, or what some people call mommy money, or daddy dollars, or baby bucks. And they earn these tokens. Then the parents can use these tokens to purchase much needed baby, baby items from your little thrift store, your baby items thrift store that you have there. And uh, baby clothing, strollers, cribs, and all of that. It's a way of encouraging and helping these young women. A lot of them are single that are uh, considering abortion. Now let's look at the pros and cons of a brick and mortar facility. Number one, you're able to establish ongoing relationships when you have a brick and mortar facility. And you can see multiple patients at the same time if properly staffed. Also, it's able, you're able to offer parenting classes, like I mentioned, the Earn While You Learn uh, works much better in a brick and mortar facility. The post-abortion classes and ongoing spiritual counseling. And you can provide prenatal care at a facility. Now, some of the cons. A permanent facility is a targeted and attacked more by the media and Planned Parenthood. And so here you have a physical building and you get a lot much, you get much more resistance. You get the walk-in fakes, fake clients. Uh, they do that all the time. They walk in with a recorder. They set you up and try to catch you in you know, saying something wrong or giving them wrong advice and take you to court and all of that. So they're, they're a little bit more targeted in that way. There are higher costs to maintaining a building. And they're also limited in reaching people where they are. So you kind of have to go wherever there's a building available or a land available, and that's where the building is. Now, let's look at a mobile unit. ICU Mobile is based in Akron, Ohio, and it provides mobile ultrasound units that are road compliant and legal. They build them in Indiana at an RV place there. They build them for this purpose, special order. Many women, especially in the lower class urban areas, may not have access to transportation. And this, this will allow you to, to bring the ultrasound right to the women where they are. It consists of two rooms. In the back is the private ultrasound room. And in the front, it consists of a counseling room. A very nice and spacious facility. There's a little shower and kitchenette and everything there. And uh, the max is you can bring two people, two patients in at a time. Now let's look at the pros and cons of a mobile unit. So a mobile RV unit can get you to wherever there's female traffic. You can set up at shopping plazas, malls, grocery stores, near college campuses, and near abortion clinics. Take note. Mobile units fly under the radar and not as targeted, not targeted as much by the media and Planned Parenthood. You're moving around. You don't have a physical address. You're just down in wherever the, the traffic is. Women find them when they are in their decision-making process and are unsure. Colleges, universities, excellent place. Park close by so that these young women have a place to go to. They allow you to see 53% more abortion-minded clients. House calls are very effective. You can go right to the home and with the RV, and it's a very simplified startup process. House calls are, I'm sorry, I'm ahead of myself here. Simplified startup process and then more cost effective. And uh, I don't have time to go into the details of the costs. Uh, if you're interested, talk to me, but the costs are very much a lot lower with the mobile unit. Now there are a few cons. They're not able to provide prenatal care. You would need a center to refer clients to for ongoing care. You, okay, there we go, sorry. Need to click. Can only take in two patients max at a time. Okay, so you're a little bit limited there and you're limited in offering classes and counseling from this unit. But mobile units are very effective, and there's all kinds of testimonies. Here's just one. 
one of the many stories. The staff of a mobile team in Memphis, Tennessee, drove to the home of a confused and frightened woman. Through a free ultrasound, it was confirmed that she was pregnant. She still planned to have an abortion that weekend. The sonographer of the mobile team said, if you're going to have an abortion, we will be parked across the street if you need to talk before or after the procedure. All right, early Saturday morning, the mobile team drove to the abortion facility to meet this young woman. They parked near the abortion facility. When this lady arrived for her scheduled abortion, her first stop was on the mobile unit to express her gratitude for their support. Unfortunately, she told them that she was still having an abortion. As the young woman walked into the abortion facility, the mobile team was back praying. 30 minutes later, she came out, knocked on the door of the mobile, and said, I can't do this to my baby. This brave woman chose life. She later decided to place her child for adoption. This beautiful baby is deeply loved by her two adoptive parents. Miracles like this happen every week on these mobile units. And these mobile units are, are growing in number. They're scattered all across the US. So let's bring these two ideas together in a nutshell. And this is just a vision that God gave me here, but I'm sure there's different ways that you can apply this information. But this is how I feel it could work well. Number one, you would purchase a mobile unit and you would start reaching out in your nearest city. Uh, if you have a near, nearby city or uh, abortion facility, universities, all of that, you just get the mobile unit. They, uh, the ICU Mobile in Akron provides training and the whole package. The ultrasound's in there, everything's ready to go. You just need the personnel to run it. So you would, you would purchase that. Start connecting with people, and then you would turn your church. And this is, what, this is what got me excited. You don't need a separate building. You could do that. But turn your church. It sits there most of the time anyway, empty, right, except for your services. So there's a building. Turn your church into a counseling center with classes throughout the week that you can refer your clients to from this mobile unit. And uh, maybe if you're outside too much from the city, you could, you could purchase a building right in the city and have a little counseling center right in there. Um, and I just talked about the earn while you learn. You could integrate that in with Bible uh, truths throughout your classes. You can have ongoing discipleship programs right in your church and get your congregation involved. Everybody has different gifts, and you could use those gifts in this whole process. It doesn't just take two or three on the mobile unit. You can involve your whole church. And then start collecting baby items and stores uh, and store them at your church. You could have like a little thrift store there. Your mobile unit would refer these lonely pregnant ladies to your caring church people and their classes. <clears throat> Again, our main goal is not just to save lives, but it's to save lives to serve Jesus. And that's where the ongoing discipleship and the classes come in. Um, if we're just out there saving lives, these babies will grow up in these homes and not even hear about Jesus and end up in an eternity in hell. And so we have an opportunity to not only to minister to the ladies going through this time, but we have an opportunity to minister to the, the babies, the children growing up and providing ongoing discipleship and, and connection. I, I think it's just a, a, a wide open door just waiting for our people to seize. Uh, Psalm 127.3 says, Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. And... Uh, so to sum it up, your church needs some money, an RN or a registered medical diagnostic sonographer on board is what is the re required for the ultrasound, a local doctor in the area. If you have a local doctor that you can work with, he can give you a standing order to take, do the ultrasounds. He doesn't have to be on board. And a few dedicated volunteers, people that have a vision for the work, and your RV unit, is available and, and you're ready to go. And uh, I hope that was simple enough for you to take back to your congregations. If you are interested and uh, need more information, I have much more than what I could put into 15 minutes. And I'd love to pass that on to you and share that with you. But uh, it's an area that, I, that we as Anabaptist people, I believe, have, have hardly touched. I know there are some involved, but uh, I, I think I believe it's an area that would give our people a more direct connection to these hurting people. And uh, they're right around us. And people are hurting privately. It's not something that comes out openly. 
And this is a way you can bring them right into your doors, show them love and compassion, and minister to them. And uh, another little side note, but ultrasounds are very, very effective. And it's even more effective if you can have the dad in there seeing the ultrasound. Most times, when the dad sees the ultrasound, they want, the, they want to save the baby. They want to keep the baby. And so ultrasounds are really, really a key to this work as well. So let's be in prayer concerning this wide open door of opportunity. God bless you all.